Hi. Hello, I'm streaming. I'm, uh, it's Saturday evening, so I'm doing this live stream essentially just to do a bit of a show and tell really and show off some uh, more models that uh, I've got in my collection. These have to be Battletech and uh, six mil vehicles. Uh, I did do a previous video where I went through various six mil models that I've got, uh, mostly from GHQ and a couple of Battletech tanks. And what I've done is I've found the rest of my miniatures tucked away somewhere in the garage. And I'm gonna go through those now and I'm gonna do it quickly. So even though I'm on air, um, I'm going to do a very quick 15 minutes maybe at most rather than spending um, an awful lot of time on this. And let me just see where I am. Okay, I can see my video. This is a moon bus and uh, just to move in a bit closer so you can see it. It's uh, an old uh, sci-fi series, I can't remember which one, um, uh, with a sort of moon travel and this was one of the miniatures. I can't even. I don't even know who makes these actually, as far as the miniatures go. Um, although I did have some other model Comet miniatures. That's it. Uh, it took a little while to work that out. Yeah, this is from Comet miniatures, I believe, and they are sort of lead cast miniatures. It comes with a selection of small sort of skids on the bottom, uh, along with those sort of thrusters to give it lift. I'm not sure how well they're showing up without the light underneath there. So those were separate parts that you glue in. And I kept it in theme, rather than doing a moon bus, bus I sort of kept it in theme with the rest of my uh, six mil models that I had at the time. So there's a, a mash unit from uh, Battletech. And uh, I wanted to keep it as one single army, so I did the colouring the same. Well, it's got quite neat little sort of wheels with very thin sort of rubber strips around them. But yeah, that's the mash unit um, from Battletech. Yeah, so you can sort of see the size of it in comparison. It does look like a nice sort of drop ship that you could use either as you know, decoration in a game or actually as a uh, model in use. So what else have I got in here? I've got some other Battletech. And this is the command command um, vehicle. I don't know, I can't remember the exact name. HQ or something uh, from Battletech again, six mil sort of scale. I added, if I can get my small pointers out, oh, that's not them, there they are, sorry about that. So I added this sort of uh, little firing thing there, I can't remember where that's from, but um, a sort of light missile launcher, uh, but that wasn't part of this main thing, and uh, also these aerials are piano wire, uh, which is stuck in the back there, and a couple of decals added on the side. So yeah, nice model that one, um, and you can see on the top I've done some decals as well. If I can get over the top of it. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you can... Right. So yeah, again, ni very nice miniature. I've done it in a sort of uh, camo style, again, to be keeping in keeping with the rest of the models in the set. And now I've got a few more sort of vintage ones here that I've painted many years ago. Uh, this is... Um, I think they're called Votomons, Votons or something. They're from the uh, company Ground Zero Games in the UK in 6mm scale. And at the time I was very much into Battletech, so I did them as sort of armoured uh, armored walking suits for Battletech. Again, 6mm scale. And you can see there's basically two poses that uh, Ground Zero Games do. One with the, the gun facing down and then one with a gun out to the side. And what I've done is bend that arm out a bit, which gave it a little bit more of a sort of twist to make it look like they're two different models, but really these two are the same with the outreached arm there. So just a sort of view from the back of them. So this was back in the day where I was spending a lot of time doing highly sort of detailed edging on a lot of these smaller models. So you can sort of see where I've done that on the uh, right down to the sort of feet with the highlights around all the edge panels. Yeah, so nice models. I think Ground Zero Games still do those. I mean, not everybody, again, would traditionally put them on the, the Battletech hex base, but that was the game I was using them for, so they looked good to me. So, otherwise, I've got these from GZG as well. Um, I use these for models, again, in Battletech. 
just as proxies really because I'm never that fussed about being using the 100% accurate miniatures that you'd have to use um, if you were just going Canon. Um, so yeah, they're very small, 6mm scale, sort of power armor style troops, Ground Zero Games models, and you can see in some instances what I've done is I've put them on a kind of small bit of piano wire in there to make it look like he's jumping. Um, so there's a slight flex on that. But yeah, I, I really, when I was into Battletech, I really like, well, I'm still into it, but I just don't get to play it very often. But I do really like these solid metal hex bases, and I use Milliput in the base of those to texture them. They could probably do with some um, static grass adding in there, actually. You can also see that these were earlier models that I've done, and I've gone for a much brighter green compared to those ones which I did at a later point. So yeah, those are GZG, all of that lot, groundzerogames.com and, you know, available in the UK uh, and, and around the world if you go to the GZG website and look at their miniatures. They don't, um, they don't do a very good job on the Ground Zero Games website of showing the actual products, so um, they don't have them on their painted, so that's sort of a good idea for you. Um, what faction they're from I don't know, but GZG do 6mm powered armour in a couple of different sizes. Uh, just a couple of different factions. And these are some different ones I've got from them. These are not so, these aren't as sort of big I think in terms of powered armour. These are you know, not drum, jump troops like the other ones, but they do have a sort of rocket launcher in, in amongst them. So yeah, I was able to get on the Battletech bases, I was able to get uh, the full six models on there, which seemed to be representative enough to me of a sort of company. It would be more like a platoon if you were sort of saying representing, say about 20 or so models on there, because you wouldn't be using a one-to-one -one scale, it's just sort of a token to show there's your, there's your force. And I think Battletech, I think they sort of have... Um, when they have an infantry unit, it is representing a platoon, I think. And you kind of cross off, if I remember rightly, the damage one at a time. Each damage point is one one of the guys. Yeah, so back now to... These are GHQ. I'll bring these out. And these are some of my favourite GHQ uh, tanks. Uh, they're Minervas. Minerva tanks. And they look very much, in my view, uh, like sort of sci-fi tanks, I guess. One of the most sci-fi looking tanks you can get around at the moment in terms of modern armour with that uh, fantastic, almost praying mantis sort of style of a head in terms of the turret. Uh, they're great. Again, these are from GHQ and uh, you can just see the level of detail on there is stunning. Every little sort of panel. These are, I understand, are hand sculpted as well, so incredible detail on there. I mean, these are kind of iconic models, these bigger ones from Battletech. Um, and they have a nice lot of detail on there and panel lining. But obviously not up there with the incredible detail on the Minerva tanks. Still good though. Alright, so put some of these away. Um, the, these ones, again, from GHQ, I just use them as generic troop carriers, but they're Vietnam War era... I think they're called, are they called um, Landing Transport Vehicle, LTV, P's for personnel at the end as well. And um, I thought great, just handy as nice troop carriers really for any period. I mean, they are just a block, <laughs> uh, but they've got some nice detail on there and obviously there's some, there's some rear detailing on there too. And I've put some decals, decals on the side. But great models, those ones from GHQ. Great if you're just looking for generic um, troop carriers and weren't fussed about, uh, period. And those are um, obviously amphibious landing craft as well. So, right, actually, a show of, uh, I've only got a couple of these in there, but these are battle cars. In fact, I spent a lot of time doing the glass, I remember, on that one there. Uh, whereas that's not one of my paint jobs, but this one, um, I did some detailing on the glass work on the screens. Yeah, um, obviously not in period with sci-fi or anything, but battle, they're battle cars models, I think, from Games Workshop. And there's quite a range of those. 
In fact, when I find my box of them, I'll uh, do a video of those because um, I, I think at some point I bought a couple of full sets of them so and, and painted them and then put them in a box and I haven't actually played. <laughs> but I was going to do Car Wars. Also, I use them for just background um, miniatures on the board, even if I was playing a you know a modern game. Actually, there's another one, a little motor, motorbike and sidecar. I think that one's painted by a friend of mine. So, ah, yeah, I have got some other bits and pieces in here. I have um, over here some more of my Battletech miniatures. So this isn't one of my paint jobs. It's a Valkyrie, I believe a Valkyrie. And I think that's a clan mech, actually, if I'm correct. I think this is painted by a friend of mine, Daniel. I may have added the de decals. I definitely did the base myself on there. Um, but you can see that up against um, the size of the sort of 6mm models to get a sense of what the scale of that would be. One of my favourite sculpts actually in terms of Battletech, this one. I tend to favour the ones that look more sort of human humanoid robot types. But still, I mean there's some classic ones that they do as well. Um, there's some interesting, there's another clan one here actually, I can't remember the name of this one. And uh, Dasher or something, perhaps. Again, it's got the humanoid look, but maybe not as dynamic as it doesn't have a sort of pose on it like this one. It's more of a sort of a direct stance standing, which you get quite a lot with the Battletech models. They're just sort of on parade look rather than moving. And this was always one of my favourite classics is the the Archer, and that's that's again one of my paint jobs. Um, Absolutely brilliant, uh, uh, classic looking miniature. And I've, I remember this was about the first time, this was probably painted about 10, 15 years ago, but it was one of the first time where I was dusting on a variety of different weathering pigments on the legs to sort of make it look dirty. Kind of looks okay. It wasn't anything uh, amazing in terms of weathering. It was just sort of a bit of an effort. Yeah, I quite like what I did in terms of the colouring on that and um, should have done a full lance of those but never got around to it. Now this is a bit of a, a shocker in terms of bright. You can see sort of different paint styles that I was going for. Uh, this is a thug, I even remembered that one. Um, and you can see I did very sort of careful shading up to the edges on this one compared to that one which is a bit, a bit more sort of just slightly edged. This one's very bright almost sort of neon style really and nice model again I really like this as a miniature um, it is just sort of standing there it doesn't have a very dynamic pose but it's it's a nice nice model in terms of the weaponry and the shape of the the sort of main hull central torso bit okay well, I promise not to go on too long but I've got another sort of interesting thing that I did here for a while with my Battletech miniatures, which was I, I might have hairs on it, but I basically uh, went to the, I didn't paint this one, I think it's a Daniel friend of mine painted this one again, but I did put these, I did do the base, and I also put some sort of gems. You get these really cheaply on, e on eBay, sometimes only like three or four pence, or, you know, not much money really, but when you shift it around you can sort of sometimes see a kind of a glint um, off those little gems. I don't, they're not like real emeralds or anything but I got them off uh, eBay and you've got to look for something that's less than a millimetre in size and then you can sort of set them in there and um, yeah not, not a bad thing to do really if you wanted to. I would probably if I was doing this again I might have set them back in to the uh, drilled them in a little bit further but what you've got to watch is that when you're gluing them in anyway a small gem like that it has a tendency to um, dull out because if you don't have something reflective behind it it will look quite dull and you lose the effect so what else have I got? well um, that's some of these guys which are epic in this box when I say epic I mean Games Workshop epic and again, you can sort of see them up against the size of the Battletech, these dreadnoughts. Try and get those in focus. 
Again, I did those to actually go with the the sort of main force of the sort of these Minerva style tanks, even though I did them in a different colour. Sort of I liked the near future tech of them looking a bit sort of stumpy and not very elegant to sort of sort of march along the side of the tanks. So quite nice models those ones. And oh, there's been rumours around actually that uh, Epic um, Games Workshop Epic are coming back again this year. So it'll be interesting if they do, and these models be, might come available again instead of being extortionate prices on eBay. So I'll just show you where I'm sort of pulling these from in terms of miniatures. Um, you know, I have some foam trays which I've got a lot of these bits and pieces in. So out the, over the back there I've got a lot more of the, uh, I think they're called Rommel, possible, possibly Rommel tanks from Battletech. Yeah, I've got about six of these I think in total. I think they're sort of on the larger side so in terms of the rules, kind of 100 tonnes plus. But uh, you can see how much bigger they, they look to a sort of modern main battle tank in this Minerva. Uh, but still, they sort of fit in okay. But those Minervas are brilliant. I mean, if you're building a 6mm modern or sci-fi army, those are really good buys from GHQ in terms of the level of detail on the top. Okay, well, I'm going to sign off now. That was just short and sweet. Just a quick sort of show you what I'm doing. Oh, actually, also, is there one other? Maybe one other one of these nice... Uh, I think that's called a Turkina, is it? Possibly? Maybe not. That's a clan... Clan Mechawa again, and you can see I've put the the jewels for to sort of represent either their PPCs or lasers in there, and I've put those on the on the weapons. Did that a few years ago. I'd say now actually those ones are probably a bit big, uh, but you are getting a sort of a glint off them. In fact, this one again not painted by me. Uh, this one, but it kind of almost fits in with this uh, army with the green. Okay, well I'll sign off now. Thanks for. If you've been viewing, thanks for listening in. It's been a live show and um, just a quick one this evening as a kind of show you what I'm, show you some of my collection off really. Okay, thank you. Bye.